In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Canva AI to create these two trending designs, how I did the research to find this t-shirt in this niche that's currently earning over $3,000 a month and the listing's only been up for three months. I'm going to show you how easy it is step by step showing you editing tips and tricks to save time and money with your AI credits. Plus stick around till the end and I'll show you how you can get your hands on this pack for free, the prompts and the high resolution images that we create today. Like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing and let's get into it. I was doing some research with Everbee just to see what designs were trending and selling, what could be recreated that was actually selling at a decent price. Halloween, we're a little bit late for creating that now. And what was trending, but yet was a decent selling rate because there's probably not going to be much profit out of those prices, although they are in pounds, not dollars. And then I saw this one. And when I looked across, the, it, the listing had only been up for three months. It was trending and it was making sales. Now let's have a look at it. We can see that it's a bestseller and we can see that six people have bought it in the last 24 hours. I can see how the slogan will identify with people and ducks are always popular. So I thought this would be a good one to do today. We're gonna to recreate it in our own style using Canva, taking the very similar principle because we know that's selling, but we're gonna create our own different design. So inside of Canva, we want to go to the left hand side and we want to go to Canva AI. And here we can do different things. So across the top here, we want to go to Canva AI. And this is your box where you will put your prompt to start and generate an image. You can use this on the free and the pro plan. I believe currently on the free plan, you get 50 generations a month and on the pro plan, 500. So I wanted to do the duck image and I wanted to do something maybe a little bit farmhousey because that's my style, country is my style. And I still like that slogan, but instead of not all in a row, my slogan's gonna be definitely not in a row. So I'm making it that little bit different. I'm changing the style up, but I'm using that same principle that we know is popular. So this is the prompt that I use. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll show you how you can get your hands on the two prompts that we use today and the two images that I generate as well. So the first prompt is in a rustic farmhouse style. Mallard ducks, because mallards are trending, see them all over the place at the moment. I'm taking advantage of the fall colors. Again, coquette bow, because coquettes are popular. I'm wanting a vintage look and I'm wanting the text on there that says definitely not in a row. A rustic aesthetic and I want it isolated on a clean and crisp white background so that we can remove that background and create a clean PNG as a t-shirt design. Now if I go to the create image here, you can see some of the others that I've created here. This gives me the chance to play around a little bit with size and style. So if I click the style, I have all sorts of options here. I tend to leave it on non or sometimes I use smart, but you have a play around with the different kinds of styles that appeal to you. Here also is the size. Think about the size when you're creating any design. What are you wanting the design for and how is it going to look best on that product? Because any generator will fill with the image to the size that you create. So if I went for a portrait size, the image would be filled within that shape. The reason I went for landscape 16 by 9 with this one was because I was thinking about having a few ducks that weren't in a row. So the landscape ratio would lend itself to having a few ducks in a line. So as you can see, it's come up with a few cute designs. Now, I also played around with some square ones. And at this point, I'm looking for the picture that I think will look best when the background's removed. I'm not too bothered about the text. It's the right image that I'm after. And I'm thinking that I like the colours, I like the softness of this one. So if I click into it to edit, I can see that this isn't spelt right, but that doesn't matter. But I really like how those ducks are positioned. I like the plaid, I like the bows, and I just like the colours. That was the type of thing that I was thinking about. So the first thing I do is click on it, have the purple box around it so that I can edit this image. Click on the background remover, and let's see how good a job it does of that. So if I now click on the background to put a dark color behind it, let's have a look. So we can see that there's no straggly bits, that there's no white left in behind there. That looks clean. 
and we're good to go. So the spelling's wrong here and I don't really like the font. You can't really read it. It's too scripty. So the first thing I'm going to do is again, make sure the purple box around it when I click on it, go to edit and I'm actually going to remove that. I'm not going to change the text. I just don't want that style of text at all. So let's remove and now we can put our own text in there. So come over to text. I'm thinking that I'm going to put definitely across the top and then not in a row underneath. And I'm going to go up and use the sensor wild fill for my text for my font. I quite like that. It's like a handwritten font. Now that's the same size as that, but it looks a little bit bigger, doesn't it? Could try and space the letters out a little bit as well. Let's see how they look spaced out a touch. Maybe make it a dark brown colour. The text. Same for this one. I like how that looks like that. Might move that down a touch. It looks rustic. That was the style that I was wanting. And you can choose whichever font you want. If you want something that's more handwritten, then have a look at these across the top. There's handwriting. Elegant. But remember that it to keep it legible so that it can be read and understood easily. What I would do now is group everything together, click the group button and then when I would command C to copy it, I would go over then to my mockups, click on the image, command V to paste and size it accordingly. And I think that looks good. And like I say, have a play around with the styles and the ratios and see what images you create. But I think Canva did a good job with those. Now the second duck t-shirt design that I want to create is something that's a little bit retro. That retro vintage look is always popular. Again, we're still using the mallard ducks, we're still using the ducks, but we're putting a different spin on it than the last one and the one that we know is selling. So this is the prompt that it's a retro 70s inspired graphic. Again, ducks are scattered around. Bold stylized florals, groovy color palettes of burnt orange, mustard yellow, olive green, warm brown. One duck has a coquette bow. And again, we want the text in there, definitely not in a row. We can play around with the style. I'm just gonna leave it as it is and I'll put it as a square and then click the purple arrow to go. Again, you could rerun it if you wanted to. You just click here on this copies it back into the box here, click the purple arrow to go. I did some more before and the one that I really liked was this one. So click in to edit, click on the design, make sure you've got the purple line around, click background remover and let's make sure that it's clean. It looks clean but let's double check with the dark colour behind. And we can see that there's no stragglers or anything there that looks clean. So remove that colour. Now I don't mind that text, I like that, but obviously this is spelt wrong. So the first thing I want to do is remove this text. I will try with the magic grab first to get because I want to remove it all. So make sure the purple box on, click on the design, go to edit. And I'm going to go to grab text first of all. This is available on the Pro, not the free Canva account. I'm going to click on the text that I want, grab. Now you can see that if I remove that, it's removed some of the picture here. So I don't want to do that. So if I click the arrow back to how the design was, Again, click on the design to get the purple box round, go to edit. Now I'm going to try the magic grab and see if that does the same or if that helps at all. 
that's not going to let me just get the text only it's getting the whole design in there so that's not going to allow me to do that click the cross so I'm going to have to remove this text manually with the eraser so click the edit button magic eraser and then we're going to remove this as best we can let's do the majority of it first Make the brush size smaller here. I'm going to remove those two yellow dots as well. Click erase. Okay, so that's got most of that out of the way. Now you could leave that flower as it was, or you could tidy up a little bit. It doesn't look too bad as it is. You could even make your brush a little bit smaller and if you wanted to you could take that darker color out or if you didn't like that press the arrow back button to go back to where it was something that I would probably do I would duplicate the picture and I would grab that orange flower would make this smaller let's create a new canvas first and move that onto there so we can see what we're doing better and I want to get that flower and I want to turn it upside down and put it onto my graphic to see how that looks so I want to click on it I want to go to edit I want to go to magic eraser now it's going to show me the whole graphic I'm just interested in this bit here because that's what I want to remove from round. I want to make my brush smaller. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Click erase. Maybe just some little bits around here that we want removed. To tidy that up and now we should have that flower that we can do something with so if I click on it command C and go back to this and command V to paste it in I want to turn it round on this wheel here because I'm wanting to cover this little bit up here with this flower so I can even make it like that and just use part of it make that a touch bigger now you might think that this is quite a bit of messing about which I agree but I'm just showing you how you can change things and how you can use Canva to change things and alter the look if you don't like it so you have either that view or you can have that flower so I, I, I personally prefer that one I want to get the word definitely across the top here so again go to the text and the font that I think will match quite well is called Pacifico I'm going to go I'm going to curve that over the top of the design a little bit so I'll go to effects go to curve I'm going to make that a little less curved I'm going to just turn the word slightly again a little less curved maybe and I think that sits quite nicely in there can change that to the color that I want maybe that same brown click on the colors and it shows me the colors here that's in that design so I could go for that brown dark brown 
think it lends itself better to a darker colour, even something like a dark green. I think the dark green looks better. Might make that a touch smaller. Again, have a play around, personal choice. I'm now going to group them together. I'm going to Command C. I'm going to go over to my mockups again, click on the image, Command V to paste it. Size it up on the shirt. And again, put it where you think, either smaller, bigger, however you like the style or the design. I think that looks really good. So now I can delete that. I've got my design. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the share button here. I'm going to download it with a transparent background as a PNG. Click the download button. So we can see that that looks good. I'm now going to upscale that and convert it to 300 dpi to print ready so it's a really high quality high resolution image and to do that I use Topaz Gigapixel and I'm going to drop my image into here I'm going to make it 5000 by 5000 it was a square shape that one I want it at 300 ppi here and now I'm going to export the image I can also do that in bulk if I want. I could do a load of images all at once. That's the good thing with Topaz Gigapixel. It upscales, converts to 300 dpi, and you can do it all in bulk quickly and easily. And I'll leave the link to that, as with everything that we talked about in this video today. I'll leave it all below the video and you can check those out. And now you can see that the image has been upscaled and converted to 300 dpi. I would also do the same with this image. I would download it and then I would upscale and convert to 300 dpi. And then both images are ready to either use on your print on demand, on your own sublimations, or in my case, to sell us PNGs in my Etsy shop. So go grab that bundle that we've just created for free, the prompts and the images. Use them in your digital products and let me know what you're going to be creating. Like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. And go watch these videos here next. Create this best-selling t-shirt design for any niche and create amazing t-shirt designs without any experience. I'll see you in the next one.